about how, how did you all come about it and everything like that? I mean, it doesn't matter. Give us your story. Well, when we first got there, we were staying at, there's a small church there called Mount Carmel, mm -hmm. and they have a youth house that we stayed at. So, um, I can't remember the man's name, but he, he was so nice. He worked um, within the coffee house that we worked at. And this coffee house, you know, it's a ministry that works through it. And, you know, we helped them. We cleaned up their courtyard. We helped repaint. We helped stock their food because... You know, they, they know almost everyone in the community that comes in and out of that building. And they have these open mic nights still on Thursday evenings, I think it is. And I mean, people from the community will go up on there. They'll share their stories. Some of them write poems. And there was a girl who wrote this poem and I just cried. Mm. Oh, my goodness. And she did, like, a dance. And it was it was really amazing. Um, and we worked within Plan 6. They have all these different little plan neighborhoods. We worked with Plan 6. We worked with a family. Um, one family, she had four kids. We worked with um, an older lady. Um, she lived by herself. She was really sweet. And we were supposed to work with another family, but then something happened with that, and they never really told us. But we helped, you know, rebuild their porches that were, like, kind of rotting away. Um, for the one older lady who lived alone, we helped rebuild a whole ramp so she could make it up to these giant steps to her house. Wow. And like, I'm, we we would just walk up and down the streets trying to look for these kids to do a VBS with, like the vacation Bible schools during every afternoon. We'd make them snow cones, and first day we did it, two kids showed up. Mm. Two. <laughs> but the last day we did our VBS, there were probably about 15, 20 kids that came. Oh wow! It was really nice. I mean. Those kids were so sweet. You would think that, you know, they'd be kind of sad of how they're living, but they were some of the brightest kids I think I've ever seen. Some of them brighter than even our Camden kids. Mm -hmm. They were so sweet and amazing and kind, and it was amazing. And um, we would just go door to door, and if people, almost everyone sat on their porches, and we would just mm -hmm. talk to them and start conversations, and they'd tell us about themselves. And we didn't try to push the whole Jesus thing on them. Like, we would just talk to them about, like, what they do and how long they've lived here and we just made a relationship with these people and they saw what we were doing and they would talk to us about it and they'd ask us why we're doing it or where we're from and when we told them that we drove 14 hours to get up there they were just baffled they were like why did you drive that far but um there was one particular woman i met um her name is mrs jones she lives alone sweetest old lady She's one of the most godly people I've ever met. Oh my goodness, she was something else. But I, I probably learned more from her than I have anywhere. She was, she was something else. But when we'd go to the coffee house, um, they would tell us to just, you know, sit down with the people and just talk to them. Mm -hmm. And on open mic night, um, I talked to this one lady. Her name was Jojo. She would talk to me about the Trinity ministry. That's how she kind of, her whole life turned around. She is a recovered heroin addict. Mm -hmm. She got addicted to heroin at the age of 14. And wow. she said it just kind of took, took over her life. Um, she talked about how she got with these guys who she thought loved her, and they just beat her. Mm -hmm. They didn't care about her. But mm -hmm. she has two kids that she's trying to get full custody of because these guys just like crap. And so she's, she's gone off of her feet. She's got a full-time job working with the Trinity Ministries, working with those kids, and just you know trying to lead them to a better life to not take the path she did and just the people and their stories was amazing and just hearing where they've come from and their positivity and like they're not hopeless they have so much hope and mm -hmm. I mean they're they're not like the people here to no. me and like they help each other out every person on on that street that we worked on they knew each other mm -hmm. they all knew each other they, they would talk to each other when we had our cookout they were all mingling together we had who knows how many people at that cookout just hanging out and talking and mm -hmm. sharing good times with it, it was amazing mm -hmm. and um I'm trying to think now how long were you there we were there for a week a week okay about a week so if if somebody were to ask you, okay, what was the, you were able to share the story of Jesus. Um, was it off of any scripture reading? Was it off of a picture? Was it off of a relationship? How, how do you think that you presented the gospel as a missionary the best while you were there? I think when we 
we were there, the best way we shared it was building relationship with the people yeah. and them seeing what we were doing. Good. Because when we were there, um, he told us not to try to just push it on them. Because yeah. that turns people away when you mm -hmm. just try to like shove it in their face and be like, read this, read this, mm -hmm. believe it. Mm -hmm. When you build a relationship and kind of share the gospel through your actions, that's what really catches people's eye. Yeah. And so it's, it's sort of like as... Um, I'll get our, our uh, you know, my brain dead, but the, the, the discussion was, you know, share, share the gospel daily, but use your lips only as a last resort. So I think you were really doing an incarnational gospel. That's good. That's good. Um, would you do it again? Yes, I'm actually wanting to go back next summer because they're going summer. back up. They're planning on starting to go back there every summer. Good. They want her to paint a mural. Oh, yeah. Nice. And what, what is the mural going to be of? Any ideas yet? Herb told Herb he works through the ministry at the yeah. cafe. He wants me to design it myself. I have no idea what to right, do. Right. And I think a lot, if you go to this area where Hannah went, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a story of the Phoenix was the way that we originally went into Aliquippa. You know, the Phoenix is this mytho mythological bird that came out of the ashes of the fire. And, and Aliquippa, um, the next town up, um, you have that whole valley there on the Ohio River, because now you're, you're north of Pittsburgh. This is where the Mongahela and the Allegheny come together and, and make the Ohio River. Um, this area was just Rochester, and, and um, they, they, they were the Iron Belt. This made America steel, it made us where we are. And when the town, when the meal closed up, the women were left behind. The men took off to follow jobs and left the women. And crime came in, drugs came in. Heroin is a massive drug up there. Um, when I was there at seminary, there was a little package of heroin that had a skull and crossbones on it. And, and it actually said, if you take this, it'll kill you. It was such a high dose of heroin. People were fighting to get that. So it's, it's sort of like a controlled suicide is what it is. And that whole area there uh, where steel used to be king, heroin is now the queen. Um, and it's not surprising to see a 14-year-old addicted to heroin. That's, that's quick. Um, would you say that there were more houses there or vacant lots or empty houses and vacant lots? There were a lot of empty houses that yeah. were just falling apart because the guy told us when the steel mill was up, there was probably around 27,000 people that lived there. In that one little town, now there's probably around five to seven thousand people that yeah. are there. I mean, everyone left. Yeah. Were you there for a church service? At all? <clears throat> for a church service? Um, we didn't get to go to the church services really because we got invited to a church um, on a Thursday evening, but that was the open mic night where, you know, um, I can't, I, th I can't think of his name to save my life right now. Yeah. But um, he kind of shared with us. Because he works with a more like an outdoor kind of ministry where he'll take groups of people like on hiking and runs and kind of share like nature gospel, I guess. Mm -hmm. It was it was neat because he took us on a hike. And he talked to us for a little bit on that open mic night, kind of, kind of gave us a sermon. It was really neat. So we never really got to go to a church to hear a sermon, but you kind of heard people's stories. And that was kind of like them preaching to you more than us trying to preach to them. Mm -hmm. The reason I ask that because we're looking at a ministry in Brunswick and it's not much different than where, where you were. Mm -hmm. And just reading through our liturgy, that's not going to be part of their culture. Yeah. When you use in our, our manifold sense, manifold, where did that come from? That used to be yeah. part of a car lot. They just yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, did I put a gasket on or not? Yeah. So we're going to uh, have to modify it. Yeah. And that's going to irritate some feathers somewhere, but we don't, at least I don't care. But we're going to have to modify the language, have to modify maybe to some rubric, but at the same time, mm -hmm. educate people. That's where I was curious to see how they would do a liturgical service in the community. Like that. I know that's Mimi Farrar is up in there. What's that? Yeah. Modify or educate. Well, Mimi Farrar is up there. Yeah. It's like Nancy said, when we started doing our, the first things we started doing, like with Off the Grid, or even when we did a service in a campground, I would put together a message. And she said, you got to remember, some of these people don't even have any idea what the word sin means. Yeah. They don't know. 
That's right. So you're coming from this people that have, you bring a Bible in there, they're like, yeah. so? Yeah. <laughs> they don't understand what's, you know, they don't even get the propitiation. Yeah. They oh, yeah. They don't understand sin. So, I it's mean, good it's, at a dinner party, though. You can bring that word up and people yes. will go, oh, so, I mean, propitiation. What, what Hannah's saying is, is so true, and it rings so true, and then it fits in with what saying in Brunswick. I mean, we're right. all, if, if we plant up there, that's the kind of things we have to learn from. And uh, yeah. I guess my hope would be when we do it in Brunswick is that uh, we can get Hannah some kind of involved yeah. um, up there if she's willing. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants her to go there to help out with that kind of stuff. Do you still have any contact with the folk up there? there? Do you email uh, any of the, the people that you were with? In uh -huh. Um, I keep in touch with uh, Mrs. Jones every now and then. Okay. <laughs> and um, I kind of see what the coffee place is doing because I kind of followed their page on Facebook. Because oh. I like I like to see what they're doing and how everything's going. And I friended the person on Facebook who did the outdoor ministries, kind of. So it's neat to see what groups he takes out there and like what he has to share because he'll post about it. And it's really interesting kind of things they do. Aliquip is famous. If you look in the, the history of Pittsburgh, they, they had a railroad that went through the town. Down, It's a, it's a valley. Aliquip is built in this valley of sorts that comes off of one of the hills on the western side of the Ohio River. And Aliquip is, is completely, or almost most of it, is in this valley. That's a finger that goes up through. And if you look in the history of Pittsburgh, they have Aliquip and Pittsburgh Railroad, and all it did was bring the coal from Moon, which is the next town over, and they had these engines with little itty bitty wheels, and you can always tell an engine has little bitty wheels means that it's not going fast, it's for traction, and they would bring the coal and the coke and the iron down to, from these mines. Did you get a chance to go up toward the airport when you guys were up there and see all the the uh, Pittsburgh airport is built on an old mine. They actually took the top of the mountain and it's a plateau. <coughs> That's the only place you can land. So it's kind of scary when you fly into Pittsburgh because you're seeing all these mountains and you're flying through a valley and you're landing on a plateau, um, which is always scary when it's icy and you realize the end of the runway is a valley somewhere. So you're going down a little bit faster if you don't brake hard enough. Bring your skis. Right. But Aliquippa is um, this beautiful suburb that, like I said, it, it's uh, it's very old. Those houses are all, after the Civil War, they were built. Wow. And you're probably re replacing Mrs. Jones's. Mrs. Jones has a beautiful house. And they all have the porch. They love their front porch. Oh, yes. You can't That's live in Pittsburgh cool. without a front porch. If you haven't been to Pittsburgh yet, you don't know life until you sit on a on a rocket chair on a front porch. That's what I did. Yeah, and, and it's Mrs. Jones like every afternoon talking. And they'll just sit up there and they and did you learn any Pittsburghese while you were there? I didn't. Okay. I'll teach you some. If you're gonna be nosy, you're gonna be nebby. That's a that's a Pittsburgh word for being nosy. So you'll always hear them say, So she's being a little nebby, isn't she, around the water cooler? Uh, what about instead of as we say down here, plural of of uh, you is y'all, right? Yeah. Up there they say what? Yuns, yuns. So it sounds like yuns, but you know, very yon. And they go yuns uh, is is their uh, Pittsburghese. They probably drink pop. Yeah, so pop, pop, yeah. pop, and put in a sack. Yeah. That's the only uh, thing I really heard different from Miss Jones. She'd be like, oh, I'll talk at you and talk at you. Yeah, that's talk so at sweet. you. Yeah. And, and God forbid, when you live in Pittsburgh, it's, it's sort of a, a blinded rule. Um, you own the property on the sidewalk. And did you see chairs put out so that people don't park? Because they don't have, most of them don't have driveways. So they put chairs out in front of their house. That means you couldn't park there. God forbid during the winter season, your neighbor shoveled and somebody pulled in there. I've actually seen wreckers, wreckers called and towed the car away from the front of the house. So, um, Today's world they probably shot spiders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, So again, we're blessed that you went up to Hannah and, I, and I'm really glad that the Lord spoke to you through this and, and that we could be part of this for you. And uh, I only pray that maybe next year, um, 
you'll inspire somebody else to go with you. Uh, perhaps maybe we need to pray about getting off our duff and uh, maybe we need to send Marion. You want to go to Pittsburgh for a week as a chaperone? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's only it's only 39 miles. Is it? You're covered. You're good. <laughs> it could have been a deflection by by Mason or Dixon, one way or the other. Um, and they're in Detroit, right? Whichever you. Detroit would be. <laughs> yeah, that's Motown. <clears throat> but I think maybe next year we need to bud up, and and that that would be an ideal. I think maybe we should send a couple adults up to give a hand, and maybe send you up with the church credit card. Whoever goes. So that if there comes a need from Mrs. Jones or somebody like that, or um, I, I was going to try to pour Hannah down with a bunch of our Bibles to bring up with us, but I just thought this poor girl's going to schlep these Bibles around. So we were going to try and mail them up to her or something like that. But maybe that's an idea, something that we can give up as a free community thing. And Anna, now that you've gone, if you go again next year, maybe you can communicate with them and say, what is it that we could help maybe yeah. provide? Good idea. Yeah. Oh, you know, exactly. And, and, and not just schlep it in your backpack, but maybe we ship things up there so they're before you got there. <laughs> and one thing about Hannah when she went this year, she had never met one soul that she went with. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. She, she went cold not, turkey. She went cold God turkey. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I don't think I could have done 16. it. That's a brand new year, right? She's 16. I'll be 16. Oh, she went right. with that yeah. group from the Well, we're getting to 16. So. <laughs> <laughs> she would love to be 16. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that. But you know, and, and but I don't know who's worried more, you or Mom, because poor Mom was just yeah, I don't know, she yeah. doesn't know anybody yeah. other than Mom. Yeah. Well. You and Grandma. Yeah, I, I said. <laughs> and then too, you talk about going thousands of dollars or whatever to yeah. go to Haiti or wherever they all go. Right. Yeah, her trip cost two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. For a week. Yeah. That's yeah. all she. Yeah. That's all they wanted. Yeah. yeah. And she likes to go to Africa though, because she also sponsors a little boy in Africa. Nice. Togo. And like I said, Steinway Foundation up there at St. Helena's. Uh, Bishop Steinway's up there. He's a great guy. Um, he used to be the uh, Bishop of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is part of the founders of Trinity, the seminary that we needed, an evangelical missionary uh, type seminary. Um, you know, I mean, <clears throat> Brent keeps bringing up, you know, that. How come it's at seminaries they don't teach much about church planting? And, and I just, I'm thankful I listened to the two classes that I had to take that, on church planting, so we have a general idea of what it is. But I think a lot of it has to do with relations, like, like what you went on, and that's really what a mission trip uh, is all about, is, is learning new people, meeting new people, and being open to. But trips uh, like hers, and for things here, mm -hmm. you get more bang for your bucks. Oh, sure. And you know it really, it really goes a long way. Right, right. And uh, I know it's good to have have these overseas and all, but it's really tough to. We have it's such a better. To, to, to me, it's almost better to send the money than it is for me to go. Sure. Yeah. It could be, and it, and it could also be that somebody hears that calling and let them do it, and I'll support them. I mean, if yeah. if one of us yeah, had a calling, right. let's say, to go to Uruguay. I think we'd all support that and somehow allow you to go, but not everybody has that calling, and, and we've got to be okay with that. Yeah, you know, we have some good friends that, uh, in fact, I wish they're here in the States now. I wish I could arrange for them to come by this way, and they're going down to Fort Myers to visit again, but they're in Indianapolis now. And they took their little kids and actually had another one born huh. in Kenya, huh. and, but that's their calling. Um, in fact, it's so much so that, how old is Andrew? Four? Their four-year-old is now visiting family here in the United States. They're back here for their break or whatever. And he can't wait to get home because he has no idea what, this isn't home to him. Yeah. yeah. He misses this 48 eggs. years misses or so. so oh, but they were sent there. It wasn't just a, I'm going for a week and coming back. That's tough in a, in a place to have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hannah, you, this is your first week at school? My first week of school? Yeah. Um, Last week? It was my second or third. Second or third. Wow. Okay. Started on the fifth of August. Is there a Christian group? Is there, when I was in, in high school in, in uh, Pennsylvania, eastern part, the better part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was pretty great. We had uh, Youth for Christ and Young Life and 
there might have been one other Christian oriented high school group. Youth group. But were those Inter through a church? No, those were interdenominational. Yes. Huh. Uh, both the uh, Youth for Christ. But I mean, it wasn't through the school. Because nowadays they would not allow that in the school. No, no. Yeah, we still have our FCA. Do you? Do you really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 